to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom. Oh, shit. Adam. Oh. And Josh. Hey. The man <laughs> is back. <laughs> I'm here, finally. He's hey, back. welcome back. I'm back. Welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're sorely missed. Oh, uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have anyone to talk to about Dark Souls. Oh, yeah. So we're going to dedicate this entire show <laughs> no. to Dark Souls no, talk. We went the whole cast without saying the words Dark Souls. Okay. We, so yeah, it's just, yeah. just, just throwing this out here. I have the ability to make you not in the cast anymore. And by that, I mean, I will just mute you <laughs> and we're good. But you nah. see, I, I control the posting. So what I can do is I can just replace the video with just yeah. me, like dancing in a loop. And that would be the whole show. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, like, that'd be great. And then just you saying Dark Souls, Dark Souls, and like... Yeah, that's the whole show. <laughs> that's good. That sounds really you, good. You're about to see moderator control wars all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. This is good. Mods are gods. <laughs> so, Josh, been a while. How you doing, Chief? Oh, man, I'm good. Just been crazy busy. Everything kind of all fallen into place with general life stuff. Um, just yeah <laughs> went up to um my wife's uh grandpa's cabin explored the woods <laughs> returned dude exploring woods is the best just like it you was. know what fuck it i'm just going somewhere yeah yeah it was great like we were just uh you know getting prepared for a family event up there so it was a big uh it was a big thing we were like cleaning things and trying to like make generators work and i was up there trying to, i was like digging a well what <laughs> it's like yeah well okay yeah what so, so there's like a there's <laughs> like a, a spring right and the spring was clogged so water wasn't getting down to the house and if people are going to be up there they need to be able to flush toilets and stuff <laughs> go figure right and so like I was like digging into the spring, trying to find where, uh, where it was clogged and like, cause there's like the pipe runs into the spring. There's like a tunnel. It's a full like system that I don't know shit about. So I'm mm -hmm. like trying to dig it up and no one knows anything about it. So I'm like digging it up, trying to figure out where things are going and, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, there's your problem. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So <laughs> let's, bring, let's bring in someone that knows what's going on. And so that's my, that was my suggestion once we got to the end of that. If Josh nice. is digging your well and fixing your plumbing <laughs> issues, you might be in bad hands. Hey, I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, there's worse hands to be in, I suppose. Well, there are worse, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's yeah, like no, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a plumber. It's like, well, if I'm doing your well plumbing, digging? you're in trouble. Like, yeah, I could do hey. some basic-ass shit. Other than that, nope. Google yeah, YouTube to do it. are very powerful resources. Yes, they That's are. That's what I ended up doing. So if you end. couple that with a little bit of confidence, you're, yeah. you're set. The thing <laughs> is, is I also didn't understand what was going on. Like, in this situation, I, I like there's a whole bunch of different ways to, to tap into a spring. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of them were done the way they did it there. <laughs> Like it's like a whole like apparatus within this this side of a hill, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't want to crawl down this tunnel because I don't want to die. <laughs> so I'm like, someone yeah. else should do that. So you guys should just yeah. make like a Rube Goldberg device with buckets and levers and all that fun shit just to bring water back. That's like, a good idea. And like, like it's all on like a um uh what is it a dryer line that has like. Like little like spinny doodads that like kind of you pull it back and forth and just in a constant. Loop. At one point, you got like a rabbit <laughs> running great. after a carrot to like actually power that or. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how you do it. Fuck yeah, that's how or, you do that shit. <laughs> or a bear and like honey because it's got to be like. You know, yeah. Not functional. Also, Adam, <laughs> you said one yeah. thing I slightly disagree with. You said oh. a little bit of confidence with YouTube can get things done. In my experience. A little bit of confidence misplaced while having YouTube can fuck a lot of things up. Because YouTube <laughs> oh, yeah. videos oh, yeah, make things yeah. seem easier than they are. Like yeah, when I changed true. when I changed the alternator in my car, the dude did it in like eight minutes. It took me eight <laughs> minutes to get the first fucking bolt out. And then I realized yeah. I didn't have the shit I needed to get the rest of the bolts out. So it ended up taking me like three <laughs> fucking hours, but took this dude eight minutes. Nice. 
So yeah, wow. actually, yeah, I, had a, I had a similar experience this week. There was a, a YouTube video binging with Babish. Uh, he makes food from TV and movies and stuff. One of them was Pulp Fiction, the Big Kahuna Burger. Yes. So he made like a regular uh, it smash. Looks burger. so good. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was like a smash burger. So you, you know, you have hamburger in a little ball. And then you put it on a really hot pan and you smash it down with the spatula and it makes it real thin and crispy and mm-hmm. you know, whatever. So I was like, all right, I'm going to make this Hawaiian burger. Oh, so shit. I, you did it. I did it. Yes. Oh, so my I God. Bought, so. I bought some sweet Hawaiian rolls. I bought a whole pineapple. Um, I, I bought some onions and hamburger and Monterey Jack cheese. It's like, all right, I'm going to do this thing. Uh, I caramelized the pineapple. Nice and charred on both sides, made caramelized onions, toasted the buns, and I have rolled my hamburger into balls to smash them down on the pan. And I did so. And I didn't make these little hamburger balls large enough. So I had these little baby patties. <laughs> they were Aww. like way smaller than the bun. <laughs> little crispy so sliders. So I ended up making two little Damn. tiny, yeah, two little tiny crispy sliders. And then I learned my lesson on the next one. Uh, like a, a mostly right size so when i stacked them on the bun it was like two like kind of awkwardly piled on one side and then the other patty filled up like the uh, other whole second side it worked (laughs) that's hilarious i made one burger out of three little mini burgers basically that's hilarious i had the exact opposite problem (laughs) i did the exact same thing watch the same exact video did the same thing i made my my hamburger balls too big oh (laughs) like 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 pancakes (laughs) so what i did is i put cheese and then i roll them and then i made little tacos nice little little hamburger tacos oh they they turned out so good though oh they are good yeah they're amazing i had some of this hot sauce that's kind of uh (laughs) tropical flavoring sort of jerk spices in it but not like heavily Uh oh so good Jerk I, I, spices. We, I did a whole bunch. Guy? <laughs> yeah. You're just a jerk with your jerk spices, <laughs> Jake. I've done a, a few of them, a few of those hamburgers, uh, like the smash patty burgers, and I've done them a mm-hmm. bunch now ever since then. Um, mm-hmm. And and uh, I noticed that like it's just better with salt and pepper, like just yeah. ground pepper and salt, mm-hmm. and it's perfect. And every time I try to add spices to the burger, it just fucks it up. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I just love how how simple it is. It's it doesn't so take hardly any time at all. That's like it. it. As soon as it starts to look kind of brown around the edges, you flip it and you stick your cheese on right away. And by the time the cheese is melted, it's pretty much ready to go. Yeah, I did that. I did that for uh, for Whitney. She it was like nine o'clock or something like that. Which, <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's go. You know, I'm gonna make a burger. She's like, you're not gonna make a burger in that time. I'm like, I'm gonna make a burger in that time. And I come back like <laughs> ten minutes later, like boom, burger. And I even like grill. I made grilled onions, and I did the. I did. I did the but uh, the bun and i i melted like butter and everything it was like mm-hmm. a whole thing i did the whole thing yeah. like 10 minutes. nice so that. i i also experienced the the fastness of that so when i watched the episode um i i ran down the street uh and i sat down at a table and then i ordered a hawaiian burger and then they brought it to my table and it was so easy to get that set up uh and then i paid for the burger and i left mm-hmm. uh but it it took no amount of time there was no prep work involved it was great. I just sat down and ate my burger that I had ordered. He says no nice. amount of time, not counting transportation. Well, I, well, I did walk there to be fair. The, the crazy thing is, is like after doing that and exactly what you did and what Adam did and what I did, like I can't bring myself to go to a fast food joint in some situations. Cause if I have the meat in the fridge, like I don't need to go down down the road to get like a burger from a fast food joint. I mean, I can make just as good, if not better, a burger right at home. And one time I was like, I was like going to get in my car and drive to a fast food place. But I, instead, I just went to my grocery store and and that was it. And it was fine. Yeah. So like, I don't know. It's one of those things. Like when you start, like, I can't wait for this whole binging with Babish thing to to be real, like to all the stuff going there, so I'm not fucking it up and making my burgers like a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, the nice thing about that stuff is it also encourages you to buy new things for your kitchen 
It's kind of like, <laughs> yeah. tool. it's just in general, just the same thing as tools where you can do mm-hmm. the same job with other things, but you're just thinking the whole time, man, this sucks. This isn't the right tool for yeah. the job. This just blows. Mm-hmm. And then you get that chef knife yeah. for dicing yeah. or for mincing things. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, this is great. Yeah. You're right. And I, I got, um, what I ended up getting is I got a big spatula with like, with like, without any holes in it. It's like a big metal spatula to do the pressing in burger <laughs> because like you can't do it with a regular spatula, not the same yeah. way. Because like I, I had one with like just holes in it. They're like, I don't know what the, yep. the holes are even meant for. And I tried yeah. to smash the burger and then like the meat like, like squirts out the little holes. And you're yeah. like, oh. Like, I, oh, well, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> I ended up using just a smaller pan, another pan. <laughs> That's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. I have yeah, a, that, is, that is brilliant. I have a pan that came with a smash lid. Really, it's like a um, cast iron lid that you're des- it's designed just to press down with. Oh, wow. So I've nice. done that with steaks. It works really well. Nice. But yeah, so I actually was kind of excited. I was in Detroit this week. Um, mm. And back Midwest, I'm thinking to myself, Coney's. There's got to be a Coney place somewhere. I'm like, I know there's no skyline, but there's got to be a Coney place. Yeah. Well, any I'll, luck? I go to the hotel and I'm just looking like food, food, food. And then I start looking. I'm like, there's this Coney place. Okay. Look it up. Nope. Cash only. I'm like, fuck it. Right next to it. American Coney. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I get there and the guy's like, do you know what you want? And I'm like, fuck. Yes. Like, What's give me Coney's? two Coney. <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Sorry, 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 sorry. You oh, just shit. like you, you, you just dumbfounded. You broke him. Okay. You totally yeah. broke. Him. So yeah. What, what, yeah a Coney, what, is Coney? what a Coney is is you get you a hot dog. Yeah, exactly. Um, Dobby and Chat his exact respect. It's like what? So you get a hot <laughs> <Yeah>. dog. <laughs> so you, cook I, uh... it, you slap it in a bun. You get some chili. Or actually, after you put that in the bun, you put a little bit of mustard on it. Then you put chili. And when I say chili, I don't okay. mean bean chili. Pure, hundred percent beef chili it's kind of um greek chili quote unquote but it's just okay, hamburger okay. and it's, it's got meat different- slurry let's be real it's meat it's, slurry. it's meat slurry is yeah. it scott coney is it the scott coney scott's coney's is that what it is i don't know but then, don't know. You, then you put cheese then you put onion on it and then you put cheese on it and it is all right Josh, messiest- i'm gonna send you a picture of this it's yeah the- please do yeah it's the messiest thing in the world Dobby's yelling at me yeah. saying it's called Cincinnati chili. And that's not what it's called. That's just the spices that since or that skyline and gold star use. It's actually often other places as well, but I don't think they're out West. I've never seen a Coney place out in Seattle. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. There Ever. you go, Josh. There it's you like, go. A, it's like a, it's a, it's a very specific ingredient. Chili dog. It's a okay. chili cheese. That seems dog. Fair. I, I, yeah, I, I chili said that. Chili, chili cheese. Dog. Chili. That's all it is. Right. Okay. That seems fair. All right. And it's a specific place. that does a good job at it. I like it. But yes, it's All it's right. fantastic. I'm on board. <laughs> so I finally got I've got me one of those. Like yes, it's been almost eight <laughs> months since I've had a coney. It was great. Mm-hmm. And then I go to nice. a bar next to me, and they have Bell's Two Hearted Out Ale. Oh. Bell's is the best brewery in the Midwest. Can't find them out here. So that's not uh, saying much, though. To be fair, yeah, it is. You have breweries like Founders and Great Lakes. You probably have so many breweries out there. There's a ton of breweries. Yeah, we do. Self probably has like 10 breweries. But they're not. There's a shitload of breweries just out here. So like just that whole, this whole area just mm -hmm. I have found one brewery out here that I would put on the esteem of a Bells or a Breckenridge. Just one Mm -hmm. so far. So we'll see. Breckenridge is not from the Midwest. No, it's not. Breckenridge is from Colorado. I'm just saying that's yeah. a, that's the tier of brewery. I think Bell's Breckenridge are probably my top two breweries out there right now. Speaking of breweries, I have the illustrious Alaskan Heritage Coffee Brown Beer. Um, and I got to say, it's, huh. um, it's not very good. Oh, <laughs> it's it's disappointing. Yeah. He's like, oh, this <laughs> is awful. The build up, so- the build up, the build up. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, so you, you see you see this um this campfire with this coffee pot. Uh, it's the label for those of you on the audio only version. Um, this is actually oh, and there's a bear in the background. Um, this is actually how they make the beer. They take that bear, <laughs> ground it out, put it in the coffee pot, and then roast it over this fire and let it sit out in Alaska for a couple weeks. Is that um, an outhouse? What is that blue thing next to that's, it? No, no, that's the coffee. That's the coffee pot. 
Oh, it looked like an yeah. outhouse next yeah. to a so, fire. <laughs> so they actually they take all this after it sits out in the, the Alaskan wilderness for a couple of weeks and they bottle it. Um, and that's what this beer is. So, yeah, not not very good. I liked I I really liked uh, some of the coffee coffee beers. Like I I don't really I'm not like a big beer oh, drinker. I love but I coffee really beers. do like the coffee beers like a lot. I, I love, love a good beer. coffee style. Like oh. coffee beers are my jam. And this it's not terrible. There's there's just something wrong with it and I cannot place it. It it just mm. it's not good. So I've got five more of these to get through, so we'll see how fun Jackbox will be tonight. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> little dr- and let that be the nice little uh, disclaimer for everyone. This week, community game will be Jackbox, which means no one needs to own anything. Just come into our to stay here on Twitch for about ten minutes after the cast. We'll be right back on. We'll be rocking some Jackbox. Oh, you can use your phone. You can use your web browser. You can use um, like an old Nokia phone with mobile internet. I think maybe. Can you? Does it have a browser? Maybe. Um, like I had an old Palm Pilot with a browser. I think Nokia's could do it. We'll All have right, to see. Sick. I believe. <laughs> I believe. Let's just go with it. I don't think a whole lot of our uh, listeners are Nokia owners, but you know, I don't it's know. a damn shame. Maybe, hey, my- we just lost that one Nokia owner <laughs> because yeah. of that statement, Adam. You you need to stop segregating people. <laughs> For the record, 1% of the audience out there is Windows phone owners and still has one of the early Nokias. Yeah. But anyway, so enough (laughs) of this random ass shit. Josh, you haven't been around in a while. I'm sure you've had some games going. A little bit at least. I had a lot of games going. Yes, I did. And then I had, like, I have a bigger span of time to play video games one of the one of which well really two of which i i did two lost and found since i've haven't been on here and uh the first one i did was awesome and it was called the i, I don't know if i'm reading this right i i don't know it's the secrets of uh reddit reddicon Ritty, i don't know it, lo- it has like the a and the e smushed together so it shows like something russian it's a bird game. <laughs> it's a game where you uh, you play as a bird and you and you have to, like solve these puzzles and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. It was so good. Like it started out like really strange because like they just kind of drop you in the level and you just have to figure it out. It's not one of those games that kind of like there's little like posts all like along the level of like uh, where everything is or how to do the controls and like what to do, mm-hmm. but they don't tell you what you're doing. And once mm. you get past those like five signs, they don't tell you dick, and you're just gonna kind of figure Ooh. it out. And it was awesome. I really appreciate a game like that. Like, nice. It doesn't tell it have a story. It doesn't have like this weird convoluted dialogue or anything like that. You're just this bird, and you're like flying. You're like, oh, look at this big thing. Look at all the cages. First thing you do is you unlock one of the cages. You're like, oh. I must be trying to unlock these cages. And then you go to the next area, and then you find a similar. Uh, shape or sculpture thing and you like and you do some stuff and then you get another little these little things that you carry back and it unlocks another and then you <laughs> so you start to like figure out um you, you start to figure out like what you're doing in that manner and i really really like that there's something to be said of a, of like a game where like you know you can just kind of you don't have to be like handheld the whole way through mm-hmm. you know i like I, those I, yeah it, it's just kind of makes like like some games is like they tell you this big ass convoluted story of like just like they could have done that they could have done mm-hmm. this like crazy in-depth thing with cut scenes and stuff mm-hmm. but like you're a bird and you're kind of a goofy looking bird you're not like the coolest looking bird i think you have <laughs> shoes on i don't know it was like the weirdest art style that like could have been terrible uh-huh. i think yeah absolutely check that out we'll put i'll pop to post it up soon but it was a uh, it was a good it was a really fun game. I was like confused for ninety percent of it, and the other percent of it was me being like attacked by other birds. And okay, it, <laughs> it looked super yeah. interesting. Whenever I was watching was, a little bit of it, yeah, it was cool. It's just like birds being assholes to you. Like you're not doing anything. It's just like mm-hmm. the the other birds will come up to you and just like attack you for no reason. And and since you don't have like a backstory of anything going on. 
Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, okay, this is just like birds or dick simulator. This is what happens? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is how birds birds interact with other birds. So, if you were a bird playing, you'd be like, oh yeah, this is pretty realistic. The, yeah, if you're a bird, you're sitting there as a bird, like, yeah, this yeah. is exactly what it's like. We'll All it, birds we'll give are it to our friend Bird and see what he thinks. That's a that's a good that's bird a good playing a bird thing. game where birds are assholes. Yes. <laughs> Consult with the professional bird. This is a good call. Um, anyway, besides that one, I I did the next loss and found which was less than successful, mm. and it was it was really disappointing because it it started out really good. I did uh, it was. Um, it was oh crap embarrassing uh it was the stairs something flight of stairs or something <laughs> flight of stairs it's 30 flights of loving love oh, which is that, really that. interesting because that one i've heard a lot about it in the past mm-hmm. and like and it even started out really interesting but unfortunately it crashed every turn like i crashed four times before i even got down the first flight of stairs and then so, after, so you got you got through to the 29th floor of loving and then you crashed out yeah and then i just okay. I, I couldn't go <laughs> so like the first like i go in and i'm like all right let's go downstairs then i got to the bottom of the stairs and i crashed I'm like okay maybe i did something wrong i checked settings went back down crashed and then i managed to get through the first like wave of story where they're like and it was really good it was really cool like it was one of again it was one of those situations where they didn't have like all this text all over the place and you kind of had to infer from what's around you and what's going mm-hmm. on. And, um, and they did a really good job on the parts that I saw, but I kept crashing and I, and I didn't want to keep circling back. Cause it seemed like one of those stories is like really, really gripping. It's, it's like a situation where they make a story based game too hard and you keep dying and going back to like, and having to re see that, that same cut scene. It really makes like a game, a lot less compelling because you're just frustrated <laughs> and then you go through like oh, i don't give a shit about your your love life i don't give a shit about your family i want to get through this section you know <laughs> it's like a grumpy old man and and uh and this is that situation so i had to pull the plug it's one of those games that i feel would be much better on console mm. oh shit yeah he said it he said it, it. <laughs> fire him <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm if, kill it, if it at least works it's okay it josh works. i'm a console that, guy still so i I'm, i mean, i for one here can agree some games are better on a console in this one like it it didn't seem like anything was too mechanically driven it seemed like a lot of it was pretty straightforward there was like small little like puzzly aspects that could evolve into more of something but it really was just like a straightforward story told in such a way so like going in and just crashing all the time like it, it's really one of those things that you don't experience on console like yeah. not as often at least i'm sure it happens yeah. but like you don't experience that on console so uh really unless they have some sort of patch out that i'm unaware of that would be nice to uh, <laughs> yeah, and, uh this is, this if, is part if your of game these... does crash on console you get instead of crashing you get warped to a secret level select menu <laughs> yeah that's the there one yeah but no this is think, part of the issue with um the different thresholds to be able to get on certain platforms like consoles mm-hmm. hold it yeah. to a high esteem it's not that you won't right. crash but if you crash we are talking such a percentage drop of a chance of crash where mm-hmm. steam right. it's did you pay us does this not look like bullshit okay and the not look like bullshit tends to come after you're on the market right and i heard some really great things about it like i heard i heard so much about it like oh it's really cool oh it has like a really interesting uh it's like super indie right it's super like cult classic-y kind of I've game heard great things about 30 flights of loving right and that's why i was like so i was so disappointed that i couldn't play because i didn't even know i owned it so i was like oh my god this is great like, yeah. <laughs> well it's okay go. you really don't <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I don't. That's a good point. So I hope to maybe I'll go back and figure it out because I'd really like to go through it. I don't know, but um, yeah. Besides that, uh, I was been playing a little Rocket League again, uh, and I know we talk about Rocket League uh, from time to time. But the big thing with this one is I started going back into solo queuing. Um, mm, yay! And That's it, a dangerous road, my friend. It's not fun. <laughs> it's yes, not, no. I mean, it's it's fine. It's fine because it's still Rocket League. I'm still is it, the ball, is, the it, is it fine? 
It's not fine. Are you solo I'm queuing? Unstable are you solo map. Queuing? That's what I thought. <laughs> and are you solo standard queuing or are you solo queuing into group matches? Just slow just solo queuing into normal twos, you know, like just two solo queuing. And it's just like weird. It's like like I've spent so much time just queuing with friends. That's ninety percent of my Rocket League time, right? I, I did use I used to solo queue a lot before, but like you know, I didn't I, I've been kind of like sheltered a little bit in the Rocket League world. Like you miss something, your friend's like, ah, oh, that sucks. Good luck, man. You know, like you see, in the back of their head, try, they're saying, God again, damn buddy. it, make that you son of a bitch, but they don't say it out loud. Right. And like, now you're out there and you're playing like with people that don't give a shit about you. And then there's like, <laughs> wow. He's like, I cannot believe someone can be so bad. And they'll just say that. Thanks guy. You're like, like people just say like horrible things. Like I like, and and you're just like i'm doing my best like i'm not i'm not a professional i don't do this yeah. for a living you know like like how am i supposed to have a perfect game every game and you like and you start to rationalize things in your head and you feel really sad and then you have to quit this is uh, this is why i had to stop i had to stop queuing solo in dota and that's why i haven't played in a very long time because it just it sucks it really sucks because even if you're not playing ranked like if you're playing normal matches and you suck in dota everyone fucking hates you yeah here's here's the big difference to me though like in dota i get it we're bottom tier players and some people in bottom tier think they're better than they are and that causes a lot of issues yeah but josh is not bottom tier rocket league i'm not saying you're a pro god or anything but josh is a (laughs) higher tier player there's a certain way the skill curve goes and you know, when when you first start playing, everybody's just having fun because nobody knows what's going on. Right, exactly. Whatever. And then you get, and then there's like a point where players start to get better, and then they start to think they know everything because they're getting better. Right, exactly. Yeah, then there's a point where you get even better than that, where you realize that you don't know shit about yeah, anything that's, ever. That's, it's the expertise curve. See, this is actually yeah, very. It's exactly. This is very very common in just about any industry. Uh, where, you know, you know, you, you're starting to learn and you know you're a beginner and then you're learning. And then when you get to the intermediate phase, you think, you know, fucking everything. Right. And then when you get to be an expert, you realize, holy shit, I know nothing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a lot like where I like, I understand that I'm not that good. You know, I don't I know I'm not a pro. I know there's a lot to like to get and grasp. But really, but like. The grand scheme of things, you're actually really good at the game. <laughs> but at the same time, like I have this guy and he's like and regardless of how he's playing, I hate to do like the teammate bashing thing, but like someone could be playing poorly and like giving up all of the situations and like it's like they're it's it's actually genuinely they're bad. Not as much as like, you know, as as easy as it is to say that my teammate's bad, but like mm-hmm. And it's genuinely they're bad, and then they yell at you, and then you sit back and you're like, "What do you mean? What? Yeah. Like, like <laughs> I said, no problem yep. the whole time. Like, I just said, you know, d- just keep going at it, bud. You got it. Like, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do this, and I'm like Fine. encouraging the whole time, and then he calls me like he just drops an end bomb, and he's like, "Whoa! Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like, we're, we were friends. Just Everything like- was fine." <laughs> Well, the worst thing to me is like your teammate, if your teammate's not doing the greatest, like you said, you don't say anything the whole time. Then it gets to the very end of the match. And the first thing he says, fucking trash teammate. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like it was fine until you said that. We just lost. That's all there is to it. You know, it's great though. Um, It's, it's all about the first kickoff in the Rocket League. If you're going to get flamed or not, it's if you screw up the first kickoff, like within like the first 20 seconds, and you miss like a save or something, mm-hmm. they have painted this picture of you. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah. like, and I screw up like all the time because, again, back to like not perfect, right? We're all not perfect. We're all human. So, like, if I, like, I've done it to the point where I jumped, missed a ball, like really easy save, first goal, 30 seconds in, and they drop a forfeit. They're like, yeah, oh, forfeit. I and I'm like, that. what? Like, it's in 30 Jesus. seconds. And then you f- score like six goals back to back, like right after yeah. that. And then you forfeit. And then you drop the forfeit sign. It's, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's one of those things so where I've, at the very end, you want to be like, you son of a bitch, you wanted to forfeit. What the fuck? It's like, ah. Yeah. No, I've, I've it, seen something really interesting or heard of something really interesting. Uh, there's a podcast, Defense of the Patients, a Dota 2 podcast. And um, what they started doing, one of the guys would go into a match and say to his teammates in team chat, ah, man, 
we're playing against this guy. We're playing against like super awesome dude 45. Yeah, I teamed with him last match. He is trash. He is fucking trash. He is terrible at every character he plays. He doesn't know how to ward. He is a piece of shit. We are going to rock this guy. And his teammates are like, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, fuck that guy. We're going to take him down. He sucks so bad. And it takes all of the team hate and directs it towards the other team. And he said most of the time it works. If you pick a target and lie about him on the other team, it will work. <laughs> no, yeah, way. but then I feel Let's, bad yeah. whenever your team is the, that group of assholes where they openly flame that player that they for no That's given true. reason That's yeah. think yeah. is trash. Well, that happened again, like stuff like that happens in Rocket, like especially with me and like me, RS, me, dad, I'm like, we play a lot and we do, we do pretty well together. Like, again, we've been playing together. How long have we been playing together? Like probably two years since the game launched almost, but like maybe a year, year and a half, something along those lines. Like we've been playing together. So we do well together. But like sometimes when you do well, like you put the opponent in awkward spots. And so they, they, they screw up a lot. So a lot of times it's us watching people BM you, <laughs> like BM them, like you like watching them BM each other, and you're just like like sitting there, like looking through your window, like oh I guess this game's gonna end pretty soon because they're yeah. just like flaming each other, and mm -hmm. they're like there's it doesn't like when you start flaming each other, it doesn't make you better, like it doesn't make the game no. go smoother. No. It's usually you anticipating a forfeit, you're like oh this game's over, like. Yep. <laughs> it's you know the game is won the minute that you see one of them nice save their teammate uh, who just missed it. Yeah. yeah. You know it's my favorite over. my favorite is when someone misses a shot. Like they'll shoot like a shot and it'll go off the crossbar and it's like, it's like nice shot. And you're like, oh like it's started. <laughs> yeah, but in defense, sometimes that's actually not an insult. Like you could be doing like this weird off the wall over a guy yeah, and crossbar. And, and it's like, hey, that was a nice shot. It didn't go in. Yeah. But that's right. Nice so close. Yeah, like close. So one. close, dude. That's why you yeah. hit a close one. You hit him with a close one. My D-pad isn't call, yeah. reliable. If I try to do something like that, it'll end that's up being That's because you play toxic. with the wrong controller, sir. <laughs> but that's because I broke my D-pad. <laughs> uh, How do you break a D-pad? <laughs> I'm the worst. angrily <laughs> quick chatting what a save, what a save to your teammates. <laughs> so this guy we're oh, talking I'm about is me. That, Let's be like, honest. This guy Rocket Legs. <laughs> I always I always accidentally hit what a save because it's like left down or right down mm -hmm. between like what a save and close one. So mm -hmm. like I'm like someone's like like about to save and they and they just barely miss it and I go what a save. I'm like fuck. Like sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> So the worst so thing about my broken wow. D-pad, I will say this real quick, is um, so I'll try to say nice shot, which is left up. Sometimes my left uh -huh. doesn't recognize, but a lot of times it'll do a rapid fire on a direction when I hit it. So all of a sudden oh. it'll start spamming, I got it. Oh, Jesus. Which is <laughs> awesome. terrible for communication. <laughs> Just saying, terrible for communication. I got it, guys. I got it. He's all the way in well, the back. Uh, okay, he's a god. Let him do it. <laughs> So, have uh, you guys had much time with the new cars in Rocket League? I have. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, um, so, there's another Fast and the Furious DLC, which seems very stupid because there was a Fast and the Furious DLC a while back. And it was this ice charger that had like crazy looking wheel wells that stick out too far and like metal plates on the windshield. Yeah. It was just like, man an old charger like a 70s charger but with all the stupid stuff on it and it looks ridiculous mm -hmm. so we have a sequel which is two cars actually from the first fast and the furious movie well, and the second them, and this is okay the first and the second movies mm -hmm. so there's another 1970 dodge charger that just looks like a regular 1970s dodge charger with a turbocharger thing uh air intake on the on the hood gorgeous car Oh, it looks so, so good. The it's everything a Charger gorgeous. should have been. The Charger is my favorite of the looking because the other one I think looks too realistic and you can make it look too realistic where it looks a little uncanny with it in Rocket League. And that's not that's saying that it looks yeah. too good so the, sometimes. The other car is uh, what, 90... I can't remember. 99. 99? I think it's a 99, 99 Nissan Skyline. R34? R34, whatever thing. Yeah. The Skyline from the movie. You've seen it, I'm sure. Um really cool car i love that car oh That's man I, i've been playing that one a lot i don't really, I, don't, I don't personally see the uncanny thing that irk's talking about yeah uh, me either i mean it's but to me it's I, one of those I things will, where if something looks too realistic and in a situation that you know is not realistic sometimes it gets a really weird feeling to me 
It might be. You know what it might be? It might be the fact that, that those cars actually exist in real They're life. They're actual and cars. They, and yeah. they look you like... associate the, them with real cars. Well, someone right. showed me a paint job on one, and like the door was very defined. Like It looked like well, that door was designed to open in-game. There's a decal on the skyline that... Um, I call it the Borderlands like, decal. Yeah, it's like all there's all the borders of every line in the car and curve of the car. It's all outlined like a pinstripe. Mm-hmm. And if you set that to black and set your paint type to something shiny, it looks like Borderlands and it looks awesome. It does look awesome. Okay, it, it looks it. really good. It looks, it looks great. Nice. <laughs> That's how I've got it set up for my blue team. It's wonderful. Yeah. It looks so good. I'm really amped about it. I've, I'm actually back on. So, so they actually. I don't know if Tom might not know this. Um, some of our listeners might not know this. They generalized all of the, um, all all of the uh, hit boxes in the game. So now there's standard hit boxes per. Um, five, there's five different types of hit boxes. All the cars right. fit within those five type of hit boxes. Didn't they do that a couple? iterations? No, they've been they, doing that they, gradually, they, they, kind of gradually over time. They've been doing this, but. Yeah, right. Uh, so they now just all the finished. cars are finished. All the cars. So are that now means one like what the boxes. the Merc and the Roadhog got grouped together. I'm assuming. Yeah, I think they're I think they're octanes now. Merc and what Roadhog are both octane. Um, to, yeah, octanes yeah. all hitbox. Yeah, so the that's, octane that's and right. Merc are the I same hitbox. A, um, yep. Which I'm, doesn't mean they play the same because the hitbox to visual model relationship is psychological yeah. and it absolutely affects how the car feels and how you play with it. Yeah. I don't know if they standard out the rot the standard the uh made the rotation point standard because I know that before like for instance there's two cars that were standard which is the Dominus and then the Dominus GT and mm-hmm. th- both of those are the same like hitbox but the rotation points are different for each one. Mm. So like the I think the rotation um, Right, the center, yeah, the, exactly. So, like, the regular Dominus is further back than the Dominus GT. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if they actually standardize that. That changes everything because that changes how, like, how much power you get, uh, how your flicks work, how you balance the ball. Because it's also like, like how the physics work is it is it is it crosses right, and you have little quadrants, and based on where you make contact with the ball on that hitbox, it mm-hmm. pushes the ball in different ways. So that moves that T up and down. Yeah. And so if you're going to balance it on the corner and then flick from here, you have to make sure that, you know, you're on that point. It's really mm-hmm. crazy. The whole physics of it all are, is absolutely insane. Yeah. I just but, know that I will come out of Rocket League retirement when they bring in the Ford Pinto. <laughs> <laughs> I just need it. You, that you weren't all over the DeLorean. Oh, no, I bought the DeLorean. And you know what? I fucking hate the DeLorean. I was so excited. I bought it. I was like, oh, this is great. It's going to be my best Rocket League car. I can't put shit on it. I can't put toppers on it. I can't put paint on it. I can't change the wheels. I can't customize it at all. It absolutely is the worst DLC ever created. The Fast and the Furious DLC can be customized. The new one. Those cars could be customized completely. The wheels, paint jobs, toppers, boosts, whatever. I think the only ones now that you can't is the is the DeLorean and the Batmobile, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those are the only two. Trash. It's a license. Absolute trash. (laughs) It's a tragedy, really. Truly it is. Well, Josh, you do anything else this week other than the the Rocket League? Yeah, other than other than just like being really sad in Rocket League, I played (laughs) some I played a board game. Uh, it's a new board game that came out. I play we play a lot of board games. So I'm not gonna make that generalization uh, but we we played uh betrayal at boulders gate which is awesome and i think you can all kind of piece in this so um so it's it's betrayal at the house on the hill i don't know if you guys have ever heard of that ever played it but it's a fantastic game where you uh it's basically you're scooby in the gang and you're going in to a haunted house and exploring because you know oh, is that the one we played when i came out there to visit yeah probably <laughs> i think so okay. is it with the little tiles and everything yeah okay. yeah that's the one yeah so you're like scooby and the gang you're like navigating a house and and discovering what's going on and then at some point someone is the traitor someone's the bad guy and that person goes into the other room and and you know plots all of his stuff and comes in and then you play out the rest of the game so it's like a two-part game and it's fantastic so they just put out a new one uh that's all around D lore which is uh betrayal of boulder's gate and it's awesome they did such a good job at it. 
Um, I don't know. Have you guys played like a Baldur's Gate game or played anything? Yeah. So I'm a big yeah. Salvatore fan. Yeah. So that end of the D de- or of the Forgotten Realms, I kind of like. Yeah, this one was fantastic. the 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 coolest part is we is you know the the big thing about the Betrayal franchise is that um, you have like a hundred different ways that the game can go. And this one's similar. So there's like 50 different, different ways they can go. The one that we ended up doing is um, like a, a second evil head grows from your body and you have to either, it, 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 it tries to kill you. So like you get in this little cat and mouse game back and forth, trying to, uh, you know, chop off your head. And then the villain guy would take over your body and then try to chop off the good head. And it went back and forth. And if someone's head got removed, that person is either good or evil. So then you swap sides based on that. It was really interesting and a lot of fun. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Betrayal of Boulder's Gate is super interesting. Um, so if anybody has, no, you know, I've, has a, has a, a like when, when you said Betrayal of Boulder's Gate, I thought maybe it was like a prefab D and D campaign. It is kind of. It is kind of, like it, like honestly, if you want to get somebody into D and D, get them into the Betrayal series because it's basically like like almost like Baby's first D and D, and it it scripts out everything. It still has that element of you know things being unique, and especially at the Betrayal on Boulder's Gate, you actually have the race classes, and then you have an ability that you can use, like you know like Magic Missile or whatever. So you have all of those different options, but it, it's uh it's pretty fantastic. And absolutely, absolutely pick it up. It's so good. Hmm. I don't have a whole lot of border of um, tabletop going on out here. Used to play a fuck ton of uh, Heroes Quest or Heroescape. Heroescape, sorry. Hmm. Heroescape. Yeah, I think Adam actually got in on. A I few played that, that once, and it was way too long. Well, that's it is we, really long. That's it because we like, play with like ten people and it a took like an hour and a half just to for everybody to pick their people. So well, because we oh, what? Well, because there's a <laughs> thing where you pick your armies, and when you're playing with yeah. people who know the game, it doesn't take that long. But for people right. who don't, they have to read every card, figure out their abilities, right? And then there's like 150 different things that we had, so it just takes takes a while. Oh yeah. Betrayal is pretty fast when you first get into it, but it usually it says like an hour on the box, but it's going to take more than that cuz you're like bullshitting through the whole thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> like cracking jokes and stuff. Um but that's just I mean that's just how it is when you hang out with friends. And there's one that we tried to play called Ar- Arkham Horror and that one ended up lasting for seven days or something like that. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus, man. That's yeah, like it, it lasted it lasted forever. Steroids. Yeah, it just took forever. It's <laughs> Well, like it was just a whole bunch of stuff anyway, but yeah, that's pretty much all I was playing. Um, a bunch of games, but yeah. <laughs> what about you, Adam? Yeah. What have you been up to? I've played a few things. I didn't have a whole lot of game time in this week. Um, uh, other than the Rocket League we talked about, I did Lost and Found this week. Uh, I played a game called Ellipsis. Hmm. Uh, something I got on a humble bundle. It's like uh, the the Steam page says it's an avoid 'em up game. So basically, you control huh. the cir- you control the circle with your mouse, and there's all these things in each level that are obstacles. It might be like a laser beam firing, or it might be like oh. a little triangle enemy that follows you around, or it might be just like a exploding mine thing. But you know your little circle can't touch anything, so you have to collect these five points in each level, and then it opens up a gate. You get to the gate, you go on to the next level. I watched so you play this. It was avoid super all cool. the things, and the visual style is <laughs> kind of a minimalist. Uh, everything's made out of like neon. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll put the visual style in something everyone understands: Geometry okay. Wars. Oh, there you it go. Is <laughs> geometry all right, Wars. yeah, yeah. I never played Geometry Wars. Oh really? Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, it's great. Jump Your Wars is like Jump classic. Jump Your Wars is awesome. Okay. The third one has some fun <laughs> He's like, okay. uh, versus Fair modes enough. that me and uh, I. You were like, I'll put this in a term everybody understands, and I didn't understand it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that shocked me. I can't believe you did not know Geometry Wars. That was like one of <laughs> yeah, the original I've Xbox Live title. arcades. I've heard that title before, but I've never really seen or played it. 
Oh, it's so it's really good. We will solve it. It's this. one of those it's one of those games where you can play it and like slap on some headphones and just get into a groove. It is awesome. You just get into the zone with it. It's a twin stick. Oh, well, okay. Yes. Highly recommend it. It's really good. So so Ellipsis was actually pretty good. I was surprised. I really any of these lost and found games, it's you know, some game I've never heard of that I got on a humble bundle for basically no money. <laughs> So I, I don't go into it with a lot of expectation, but I actually did have a lot of fun with this the time. I don't think I'm going to play it again necessarily, but the time I spent on it, I played like an hour, hour and 20 minutes. I enjoyed it. Um, one thing I thought was cool was uh, between each level, you know, you've got like the regular level part and then you finish it and it goes to like the map of, you know, the levels you're playing. So the first level will be a circle and then there are line connecting to their second level. You click on that circle, you play that level kind of like an overworld, but eventually those start to branch off. So let's say you did level seven. Well, your next level, you could choose between two It branches off different paths and around those uh, circles and lines connecting, it'll show like little scenes almost with some of like the enemies from the game. And it kind of once you start playing through and it branches out these paths and it, you know, it shows more of the scenery or things going on, it almost tells a story. If you kind of look at it, hmm. the way the pathing oh, goes, yeah, kind of there's something there to that. And the game contains absolutely no dialogue whatsoever, no tutorial, no instruction, nothing. It's there's not even a main menu. You launch the game, you pick the like windowed borderless resolution settings, and then you click OK to start the game. And there's no menu. It's just the game, and you go. But um, I thought it was kind of cool that that overworld sort of told its own little story if you look into it. And that it wasn't super clear what it was, but it was definitely interesting. I like that. I I watched a bunch nice. of it that you were playing, and it looks super fun. Like one of those just vibe out games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 Wow. I just got a Steam gift from our good friend Dobby. Geometry Wars Retro. Uh, <laughs> nice. It says, Dad, nice. fix yourself. Best wishes, Daddy Dobby. <laughs> That's awesome. That's well awesome. played, That's Dobby. So well played. So, yeah, next week on the next cast, then I guess I'm going to, if I have time to play this before then. We'll, um, <laughs> Geo so Wars good. is like Geometry a five, it's awesome. a five, ten minute bender. It's much quicker okay. than Isaac, but it's very runnish base like that. Okay. Nice. That's awesome. That's, awesome. That's so good. Thanks, Thanks Tommy, for that. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, uh, so moving you on the game, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tried the Fortnite Battle Royale. I actually have had this downloaded for over a week, and I was like, you know what? I don't really feel like playing any anything in particular. I'll try this out. Um, I played, and I I didn't give this a very fair shot. I'll admit, but I played through like three or four. And I just did not like it at all. Really? Did you understand the construction mechanic? Uh, I didn't look into it much. I didn't play a tutorial or anything. I just kind of jumped in. But I don't think just, there is a tutorial. I well, think you just get in. Okay. Well, I haven't played Fortnite, so that's a disclaimer there. Just jumping straight in. I, mm. I just, it felt, it didn't control well. It felt clunky. I don't really like the visual style. Um. I don't know. It just didn't feel. It felt kind of laggy. People were rubber banding around a little bit. Oh, that's it interesting. It just didn't feel good to play at all. Huh. You know what's weird is the actual opposite is what I hear more often, except for the visual style thing. That I hear often as far as Fortnite. Mm-hmm. I know um, as far as Fortnite is concerned, that's another game that me and my me and my wife and a, and a bunch of yeah, people in the Discord you guys are, are playing. Really into it. Yeah, it's it's great. And we but we don't play the battle royale as much. We play the main game much more. It's to, it's actually pretty different. Yeah, but I um, so. as far as the battle royale portion is concerned, they've mentioned that the gunplay itself isn't that great. Mm-hmm. Um, the yeah, one thing that's going. that's really good about it though is it's supposed to be rock solid. Like as mm-hmm. far as most of the gameplay is concerned, it's just mm-hmm. the uh, like the spread it has a lot of rng to it like the bullet mm-hmm. spread so it's really hard to like deal with your recoil um but like close range firefights are supposed to be really really good because it's mm-hmm. a, you know this is a triple a title 
Mm-hmm. You know, this it's not a this isn't a like you know a mom and pops first game. This is like mm-hmm. this is like a full blown yeah. company doing this. So so far, like my experience with with battle royale has been it being totally solid. Maybe we should just try out some like doubles. And I, see how it goes. Yeah, I, I was going to bring that up to you at some point. Like maybe like I want to give it a fair shot. I don't just want to immediately write it off because I wasn't having fun. But, right. Um, it kind of felt to me. It almost felt like which it kind of is, but it was like, this isn't, the game wasn't made for this. They have this separate game and then they decided to do this with the tools they had. And right. And kind of put thrown together. I don't know. Right. I, I, I just, mean, maybe, just, I, maybe I just don't like the way it controls, but it just didn't feel very good to play. Yeah. That's to, that's totally fair when you really get down to it. It's a different yeah. game. And that's what yeah. most of the people are talking about when they, like most of the streamers are like, what's better battle, uh, Fortnite battle Royale or PUBG? And it's like it, they're just not comparison. apples. They're apples and oranges. They're they're totally they're not, different. They're not the same thing. Actually, I got to, I played through a few of those. And I was like, I don't like this at all. So I just, I started up Battlegrounds and I played a match. Nice. <laughs> but I only played I only played like two rounds. I didn't do very well. I haven't played it very much at all lately. So mm. I was like trying to hit E to pick stuff up, and it didn't work. And clunking around with the controls and stuff. What do you I'm mean bad. it didn't work? Because F is the button to pick stuff up. Oh, and, and I was yeah, it's e been that I've long because I've been playing other games and it just my muscle memory was like, oh, e that'll pick it up. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, no, I'm getting punched to death. Um. <laughs> so so you too, huh? I, I also yeah. played some Battlegrounds this week and I am trash. I also got punched to death. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's really, there's so nothing fun. I hate because, you, you know, you don't just jump right into a match. You have to wait the the minute or whatever in the lobby and then you got to wait for the plane to go through and then you got to jump and then you got to land and yeah. then some asshole punches you to death right yep. there and it's like oh god damn it yep <laughs> yeah i gotta do all that I, again Squishing. i always feel like the gunplay in uh especially in first person servers on PUBG feels really laggy to me really? nothing feels snappy when, when i compare what? it to the yeah when i compare it to like how the gunplay feels in uh, Overwatch CSGO. or Doom oh. or Unreal Tournament, not yeah. CSGO. Um, it just it doesn't feel like it's connected to my mouse very well, or or at least the yeah. frame rate is not very good. There's yeah, it's still it's, very much early access. Yeah, right. right. I think it feels feeling, pretty good when I play personally. I, well, it I think has it plays it, nice. It has optim optimization issues still because mm-hmm. again, this is a mom and pop. Oh my god! You know, so so I landed in the middle of Pochinki and I turned around. I was inside of a building, right? And I turned around and I instantly dropped to like twenty frames per second because mm. apparently there were people in that building that I was facing, and my frame rate instantly dipped. So I mm. knew, hey, there's at least two people in this building because the frame rate dropped. If I face yeah. the other way, everything was fine. But as soon as I turned towards a different mm. building, yeah. That's, that's a tactical shady. advantage. That's a tactical advantage, Tom. It is. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> Tom that, Jeets confirmed. There are people yeah. here. I can tell my frame rate's getting lower. VAC <laughs> is like, about to be like full on Matrix. Yeah. Exactly. You, yeah, you're gonna have a full screen on your second monitor just with like giant numbers for your current frame rate. <laughs> yeah. So you can glance on the side of the screen like oh, it's okay. like oh shit, there's a guy over here. I dropped a couple I... frames. There must be somebody close. My <laughs> spidey senses are tingling. No, but it does that. Like in, in mm-hmm. PUBG, especially like when you look to like a certain town, if you look towards a certain town, your uh, frame rate will drop because oh, yeah. certain towns aren't optimized. There are certain if areas. Am I the only also... one who doesn't notice this? It's yeah, if you have a really me. badass computer. Well, it's just, to be fair, I also have a badass computer. No, it's still it's still not optimized enough for. I mean, depends on where you drop, Eric. But yeah, there's certain like if someone's shooting from the town into the like into certain fields, um, the person shooting from the town has a tactical advantage because not only do they have like height. But they can actually, they have a better frame rate than the people facing the town in the field. Well, no, what I'm saying is I've yeah. never had a frame rate drop based on where I've been looking and why I played. Never. So I've, I've got 16 gigs of RAM. I've got a 980 Ti. Um, granted, my, my i5 is fairly old, so that, that might be it. But um, you know, I, I would think that at least graphical frame drops, my 980 Ti is good enough to push out you know, the Vive without any issues. 
it right. should be good enough to push out uh, an FPS. Yeah. I've, uh-huh. I've even gone, gone as far to lower all my settings to medium, and that helps a little bit, but the game is still woefully under-optimized. See, mm. I run it on high and ultra. Ultra, I notice a little, so I went to high and high, I'm fine. Hmm. I think I run it on, like, low. <laughs> but I could run the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta, no problem. Yeah, I had that shit maxed. And it was beautiful. For the record, I think we should talk no a little problem. about that. That was our last week's community game. Yeah, we should. So, I will say, I forgot, initially, yeah, we had an issue list. all getting into play together because the party leader, this guy for audio, me pointing at myself, didn't know how to start a fucking match with the party. <laughs> so we waited for 20 minutes for no reason. And then we started all partying up. Yeah. That game plays so fucking well. It, it is really it is fun. Well. Um, I don't think it, it's not an instant buy for me uh, at all. Um, it was fun. It's fucking beautiful. Let's let's get this out yeah. of the way right now. It is the sound gorgeous. and the visuals. It sounds Absolutely great, gorgeous. but but let's let's be real, right? What Star Wars game hasn't had an amazing sound design? I mean, really, you take the John Williams playbook, yeah. you apply it to your game, and you're done, yeah. right? Make it's it got, sound like the movie. Oh, beep, excellent! Beep, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. ten out of ten sound design. They're totally cheating because it's Star Wars. But the game is <laughs> fucking gorgeous. Oh, my God. Mm. The animations, uh, even the first person animations, while a little <clears throat> boring, are completely functional and put you in the mm. middle of that world. Um, I think all of us can agree. Possibly one of the best things in that game was doing a star fight. Oh, the fighter yes. ships. oh, my so, God. They were so good. So good. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Their car and my keyboard controls are a little weird, but it was still a shit ton of fun. I have a question for you guys. Um, in yeah. the old, because uh, I wasn't there for that one. Uh, it was one of the days I was out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really was excited about this, but I didn't get a chance to try it out. In the um, space combat missions, could you land like you could in uh, the old uh, Battlefront Two? Could you land inside there and like take take out the big carrier from inside? The the map that so we you played, you cannot. I I do not know if this will be something that. Uh, other maps will have, but the one we were playing, what, that was not the case. Anything I you really, touch with the ship, uh, explode your ship. Yeah. Oh. I, I really, really hope they do this, because that was one of my favorite parts in the original, yeah. was you know, flying inside something if you take out shields and you know, right. blowing that shit up from the inside. It was so great. It felt like an actual Star Wars mission. Shields. And, right. Um, it was so cool to like, fly in and was... kill people before they can get to their plane. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, it was great. No, 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 no. Yeah, that was so cool. And you're like taking out the the guns that like the automated guns on the sides of the ship and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you have to like run to your ship at all? Or were you just in the ship? You you started in deep space. It's combat style. Okay, so that's probably what it's going to be. I I doubt they're going to they're going to expand on that. Right. Yeah. But it, is, it's pretty it's cool. Sad. It's it's not, I, I'm not going to say it's sad because that was fucking insanely awesome. It, you can it say was, sad or you want. It was a lot of awesome. fun, but but you look at the game that's supposed to be based on, right? And you're like, oh, wow. It still doesn't have feature parody with something that came out, I don't know, what, a decade ago? No, 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 no. Right. You're confusing what it's based off of. It's not based off Battlefront 2. It shares the namesake, but that is not what it's based off of. It's based off of the revitalized Battlefront series. Mm. Uh, it's not based on movie? Battlefront hey, 2. You could say the it's same not, it's thing. It's not a remake of the old Battlefront 2. Well, we know that it's, yes, it's a remake exactly. of Battlefront 1. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I it's the sequel to Battlefront 1. I, 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 I just I, wish so. it had feature parody with a game that came out forever ago because there's no reason why we can't do that today. It just takes, you know, a little bit more elbow grease and a developer that's not dice. Well, it also <laughs> yeah. is, did they really want to do it? It may not be that they were shorting it. They didn't think it was worth it because they're doing so much other stuff. Mm-hmm. Because they're doing like, more like in that. Tuning just how perfect those lasers sound. No, no. Because, okay, so you're saying that they're short <laughs> on that, but you're not calling out any of the extra stuff that they added. I mean, oh, that game crates. has a lot Yeah, let's talk more. about those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk no, about the loot crates. The cl- that's that's the cl- actually a news point. That we have in the yeah, thing. we, we should talk about that later. Before we get into no, that, I wanted just... to ask you guys when you were playing. Um, now, a lot of this is just because I'm bad. I understand that. But did any of you guys feel like some people were just like their guns were way more powerful than yours? Yeah. 
Yeah, I got that feeling. I I, but I that's had five how it feels in I would be every... shooting at a guy. I would be hitting him with my bullets, and then he would turn around and kill me. There's, that's how it feels level. in every in every FPS yeah. to me. So Call of Duty yeah. World War II, right? We mm-hmm. we can agree that that was mostly balanced. I felt yeah. like my enemies were bullet sponges, and I yeah. felt like I died instantly. I think that's just an FPS thing. To be fair, well, I don't I, think I played the World War II beta too, and I. I felt it to a degree, but I did not feel it nearly to the degree, degree as did, this one. Do, do There's the level system in, in, in this one, right? In World War II, I was like, okay, I'm just bad. I can tell that I'm just bad. But in this one, I actually questioned, like, am I just bad or is there actual something to this? Well, there's a couple things that could go into factor there is, did you ever change your guns? Yes. Yes, because there's different options in guns. Some you take more, you do more damage, but you sacrifice range or rate of fire. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. there's the cards. Which is a uh, single use, or well, single use in in as in you use it and it goes away, but you use it again later. Not as in like you spend the card and the card's gone. Mm-hmm. But you would have a higher damage item for your card slot. Mm. So so let's That's let's go ahead and jump. Happen. Let's jump <laughs> right into this new story because we're right here. We're already talking about it. Um, several people. Uh, during the beta have complained to EA and very publicly in, in forums, on Twitter, on Facebook, saying, oh, hey, the, the way EA and DICE have built this loot craze system, it is pay to win. Um, you can you know, buy loot crates and unlock better cards that you can get from play normally, but it is kind of grindy. Um, that will give you a significant advantage over your opponents. They noticed that people who were paying money into this beta um, were just destroying people who weren't. And that's the biggest complaint. Now, uh, EA has responded and they said, hey, thanks. This is why we do a beta. We have noted your concerns. You know, whether or not anything is going to change is yet to be seen. Uh, but the fact that this is still in a beta um, you know, makes me... I'm, I'm not like hating on EA right now, right? Maybe they say, yeah, OK, it probably is a little pay to win. Let's scale this back a little bit. Let's let's tune this up, tighten it up. Um, they still have the opportunity to fix it before the game comes out. And let's be yeah. real. None of us have paid to play the beta. It was free. They, this is kind of what we get. I think in that article, they did state that the the loot system that was in the beta is not the full system that's in, going to be into the game. Like right. it, it already was not what they are currently at, what stage they're currently at with that system. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, so I I don't think we... Because we played it, what, for a couple of days? We, we weren't, like, super heavy into it all the time, like some players were. I don't think we played it enough to actually see the, the full pay-to-win thing. And, and that said, gamers complain about fucking everything, so yeah, who, who, knows, yeah. who knows where the actual truth is in all of this? They were just complaining um, about the pay crates in a single-player game that turns out to be overblown as fuck. So, I mean, it, it, it happens. Pa- people mm-hmm. like to bitch. It's what it comes down to. It yeah, could be an do. issue, but in general, people like to bitch. You have to wait to see if it's valid. True. Yeah, I, I think we're going to have to wait and see what happens when this game actually comes out. But right now, you know, after hearing the complaints, I'm even less likely than I was before to buy this game at launch. Um, not that I was very likely at all, let's be real. Um, yeah. But I don't want to play an FPS where my credit card is my most powerful weapon. That's exactly yeah. why I stopped playing Hearthstone, <laughs> because your credit card is the best card in your deck. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So true. Wow. Well, on but, with that, Adam, was there anything yep. else you did this week? Cuphead, was... 10 minutes. Oh, shit. <laughs> so that, that's enough time. I didn't, even, I didn't even beat the guy I was stuck on the last time I was playing. That's enough time to die like 20 <laughs> times, right? No, it was enough time to die like six. But uh, it was one of those where I was just like, I didn't know what to play. So I just started to Cuphead and then like right into it. I'm like, this isn't actually the game I felt like playing at the moment. So I just kind of stopped. Now, it's funny that, how that happens. You're like, I, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll yeah. play this game. That might be okay. And then you realize, like, this isn't really what I was looking for. This isn't really what I want to play. I yeah, all not, the that time. I, not that I don't love the game. It's an excellent game. I love the hell out of that game. But it just wasn't you got to be in a certain like yeah. self-hating mood to play Cuphead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I used to play like Skate uh, as my like mind numbing game. Like when I don't want to, uh, when I'm like tired and I don't want to do anything, but now that's not in my life anymore. So I can't do that. 
So now I end up wandering around game to game being like, eh, I don't really want to like do anything that's going to be super intense. Mm-hmm. I don't, there needs to be another game like that. Or maybe they should just make another skate. Just saying. <laughs> Are you? Are you just saying? Just saying. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But that's all, that's all I played this week. Um, so moving on. Yeah. What about so, you, Tom? You've been doing much? I, uh yeah i actually got in some gaming um i've been playing some overwatch because it's so great it's 15 minutes and i can leave it's not like an hour of my life it's not dota um (laughs) i'm gonna keep saying that every single week um so i was playing some overwatch and i think i realized why i have so much fun with it Mm -hmm. um overwatch gives you a ton of um little moments where you're just like you throw your fist in the air and you're like god damn it that was awesome i did something great for my team everybody loves me and then they totally forget about you five minutes later because you're in the next match but for that little bit of time you have made like the most awesome play ever and you push the thing right past the line you killed a guy that was about to do that and it's oh my god it's so much fun um (laughs) and it just overwatch just drips with blizzard polish nobody makes Mm -hmm. A, uh, a blizzard game like blizzard right nobody can make yeah. a game with that level of of polish and in, in character um mm-hmm. i i do want to talk about blizzard support so i got because i've got you know twitch prime um they give you overwatch loot boxes and i didn't have overwatch and i'm just like holy shit i've got loot boxes so i tried to redeem it and blizzard's website says oops there was an error sorry so um, <laughs> yesterday I sent them an email and said, hey, guys, I'm trying to redeem this Twitch Prime stuff. Um, it keeps throwing me an error. Uh, what do I do? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, just send me the code. I'll, I'll apply it to your account. Don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, OK. So I sent him the code and he's like, yep, you're good. Um, and he, he quoted like at the end of the support ticket, he threw in like an Overwatch character quote. He's like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, maybe be filled with tranquility or something like that. Some <laughs> Zenyatta quote. Um, and, and I was like, holy shit, that's just really cool. You are like level one support and you're <laughs> quoting, you know, game character lines at me for an Overwatch ticket. Like that's yeah. that's just cool. Even that's their support neat. has the level of Blizzard polish to it. Mm, um, that's great. Yeah, l- less than 24 hours to get my loot boxes because, of course, those are very important. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that's cool. Side note, Zenyatta is like the coolest character in that game. I don't play the game. He's pretty cool. But he is just, it's just cool. He's like, who I rocked through the free weekend. Yeah, it's just <laughs> a cool, that's a cool looking character. Genji can suck it. <laughs> Genji can suck it. Everybody <laughs> thinks he's cool. It's like, ah, it's just kind of a robo ninja. Yeah, I'm yeah, going I robo don't, ninja. I don't really... I went, uh, gray fox from metal gear solid exactly like we've had the top tier level (laughs) robot ninja yeah genji's a couple steps below and let's be real he ruins every game of overwatch he's in if he's on your team he's terrible if he's against you he's the best robot ninja to ever live i feel like the people (laughs) that play a character like that are the people that think that they're going to carry the whole team with them (laughs) yeah and when they're playing against you they do they absolutely do (laughs) Uh, so other than that, uh, The Witcher 3, uh, I did that thing again where I said, oh, I've got a half hour and then I played for two and a half hours. So that was oh, fun. That's a, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good sign of a good game. Yeah. You play it, more than you <laughs> expected to. That's that's a good game. Um, there are like I encountered a what I thought was a really minor character and he had an in-depth dialogue tree. He was voice acted well. He was animated brilliantly. I, I'm just seeing so much love and care put into The Witcher mm-hmm. 3. I, I mm-hmm. highly recommend if you're looking for an in-depth RPG, I haven't gotten too much into it, like less than 10 hours, but already I'm blown away. I just hope that nice. this level of polish and professionalism and just fucking great game design carries through to the entire experience, because so far it's been awesome. Um, I also played Unreal Tournament 4. Not what? 2004, 4. Yeah. Which one is that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, when, when games more. jump between, take a sip of the beer I hate, and I'll get. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> it's just fucking terrible. When games jump between years and numbers, oh. I don't know the sequence. Yeah. Okay. So the Where sequence is, is there's there's Unreal, uh, Unreal Tournament, which is also known as UT99, um, mm-hmm. Unreal Tournament 2003. 
uh, Unreal Tournament 2004. Unreal 2 came out somewhere in there, but it was like a single player, not an arena shooter. So that's five um, so, so um, far. Okay. So there's Unreal Tournament 2004, which was 2003, but with vehicles and some added shit. Okay, so that's um, the which sixth way, one. Yeah. Then there was Unreal Tournament 3, uh, which was basically uh, Gears of War, but with an Unreal Tournament skin. Okay, so... Sort of, because so everyone looked like they were from Gears of War, and it played like oh, shit. Oh, right. <laughs> so terrible. 3 was 7. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now this is just... It is titled Unreal Tournament, because it is fully pre-release. Like, I can go to GitHub and pull their source code for Unreal Tournament. Um, it is unnumbered at all so i'm calling this unreal tournament four um okay but it's really the eighth yes <laughs> in in the unreal series not in the tournament series in the tournament series it's one two, three it's pretty four, interesting five. it's five really the the wikipedia says uh, is it goes by actual engine so unreal engine one is unreal uh, is just unreal and then Unreal Tournament, and then Unre the Unreal Engine 2 was Unreal Championship, Unreal Tournament 2003, Unreal 2 Awakening, Unreal Engine 2.5, Unreal is Unreal Tournament 2004, Championship. There's so many of these. Jesus Christ. It's a lot of yeah, games. it's a giant <laughs> series. It is interesting that Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine 3 was just Unreal Tournament 3. And then Unreal Engine 4 is just Unreal Tournament. So, like, the other ones have, like, a whole, like, franchise yeah. per engine. <laughs> and and then are, the other two are just, like, boom, boom. There like, are all these games, and I haven't played a single one of them. Wait, you haven't <laughs> played UT? UT? No. We should do Unreal no. Tournament 99 no. for a community game, because it's, sure. like, if is, it's not free already, it should be. Uh, and is, it's a lot of fun. Is Unreal Tournament free? No. Um... Yes. Yes. Because yes, I'm looking on I'm looking on the Epic Game Launcher right now and it's it it's showing I can just install yes, it. Yes. You oh. you can so, just install it. So maybe we should Fair do enough. that as one of the community games. That would be a blast. Especially some of you guys that have already had Fortnite installed, which is also the same developer, uh, if you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. We have so, that, already have um, a launcher and everything. Let's go. Yeah, we could just go in. <laughs> so here's here's the thing about uh, Unreal Tournament 4 uh, or 2017 or Unreal Tournament Next or whatever. Um, it is pre-alpha. This is developer builds. It is bleeding edge. Um, what Epic decided to do is they said, hey, people love Unreal Tournament. People fucking hate Unreal Tournament 3 because it was a piece of shit and we own that. We admit it. So... Here's our game. We're going to make this open source on GitHub. If you don't like something, send us a, a patch. We will we will totally fix it. So the game, the gamers can actually actively develop the game alongside the development studio. It's really cool. Wow. There, cool. there are some people who said, hey, this doesn't feel exactly like it. This gun doesn't feel exactly like it did in UT99 in 2004. So change these parameters to have the spread be this much instead of this much. And the developers are like, oh, yeah, you're right. And they included that. Now that gamer has actively contributed to Unreal Tournament 4. That's it is really, oh, really cool. That's awesome. That's it's a fully open source game. You can pull it. Um, you don't own any of the code, right? It's not like it's right. free or anything like free and open like software is. But uh, you can actively help the development of this game. So um, it's nice because you used to have to pull it down and then like build the game in the engine. Uh, now you can just download a, a stable-ish build from the launcher. It's mm. still really, 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 really rough around the edges. Um, but it is, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it is not optimized at all. Uh, and it plays like Unreal Tournament. Um, I played an Instagame map. I sucked. Uh, so that's how I know it's a really good Unreal game. Um, <laughs> played some, played some deathmatch. That was fun. Um, one, one game mode I want to talk about is Blitz. Uh, and everyone else who has been into first-person shooters for a long time will know this as Reverse CTF. Oh. Yeah. Or, or Plant the Bomb or something like that. Yeah, something like that. So I actually, way back, uh, and you won't be able to find this because I didn't publish it except for like a post on a forum somewhere. Um, I made a map for Unreal Tournament 99. It was a terrible map. This was so shitty. It was awful. Um, even in my testing with bots, it, the bots didn't like it. They told me the map was shit. <laughs> um, 
but I had on on the blue team, I put the red flag and on the red team, I put the blue flag. So your job was to take it and go full like football running back, take the flag and run it to the end zone. And that That's was so the cool. map. That's basically how blitz works. You take your flag and you have to plant it at a point. Now, if you die, like it check marks every so often. So if you die and drop the flag, it'll sit there for um, 10 seconds or so and then warp back you know, a couple yards and then warp back a couple more yards and warp back a couple more yards. So you can try to continue your push as a team. It doesn't go all the way back to base, but it is insanely fun. The defenders only have uh, so many lives. So if you kill them off, like the team will just start whittling away. They will start vanishing. Uh, there's diverse paths. There are uh, little checkpoints you can get. So it never goes all the way back to base. It is a ton of fun, and I highly recommend the game mode. Again, if you've got the Epic Games launcher thing, it's free. Click install. It's done. You don't have to pay for it. Um, highly alpha. Just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, it's pretty it's fun. cool. Uh, I'm just looking at the launcher right now. They have a they have like play, create, marketplace. They have all this stuff like already set up to just get in there and do whatever it is that you want to do. It's awesome. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Um, so I highly recommend uh, going to check that out. It is free after all. Um, and if you have feedback about the game, hit them up on the forums, you know, post an issue on GitHub. Um, it is an open game. This game will be whatever you want to make out of it. Um, but yeah, so other than that, Stardew Valley, I did play a little bit of it just a, just a bit. Um, I found an axe. I returned that axe to the person who needed it um robin's axe. yeah yes i did i found robin's axe it was in the woods <laughs> who, who loses a fucking axe <laughs> i just like hacked away a tree and it's like oh wow what's this and you walk away when it's wet <laughs> man if it's raining you're kind of tree the shit is slippery yeah no you're just hitting away at the tree and then it drops in the mud you're like ah, oh, that's kind of gross fuck it i'm out of here and you just leave <laughs> and so i'll come and back then, tomorrow then, for it Nah, then you spam it, everyone's mailboxes like, oh, shit, dude, I dropped my axe in the woods. Can you go get it for me? By the yeah, way, it's, it's covered in mud. Gross. Yeah, it's super gross. I don't want to do that. Like, I, I don't want to do that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to post quests. You live in a video game world. You know, there's some some random <laughs> slob that's just looking for ma- like mindless FedEx quests. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that's what I did. And then that's I great. sold some turnips or something. I don't even know. But yeah, Stardew. It's, See, it's that, fun. I still, I still hate, hate the buttons, but that game is great. Everybody describes yeah. it, but it's got so much critical acclaim. No, sure. no, no, it no. is. It is a great but, game. So it is a me, chill as fuck game. No, so let me if you want to talk to somebody about Stardew, you should talk to you should talk to Whitney about Stardew. She freaking annihilated that game. So let absolutely me, annihilated that game. So let me talk to you a little bit about why Stardew is so great. Tom, I don't think's put enough time into it to really see this part of it. So I put 26 hours into Stardew mm-hmm. since Tuesday. So oh. just in like the last four or five days since I was on a plane and then in Detroit and then on a plane. So I played a fuck ton of it. <laughs> so um, the great thing I loved about it is you play that game how you fucking want. Like Harvest mm-hmm. Moons, right. you're farming. Eventually you'll right. get some animals, but you're fucking farming. Stardew... Mm-hmm. Right. I have planted so few crops. I just fish. I do a ton of fishing. And when I'm done fishing, I go to the fucking mines. I'm like, you know what? Really? I'm done doing this fishing? for money. Yeah, I know, right? That's so crazy. But then you just them. actually just go to the mines and just start killing shit. Or maybe mining some ores. You can make money however you want. You can fish. You can forage through the woods and just find the random foliage and pick that and sell that. You can fish and sell that. You can plant crops and sell that. You can get farm animals. You can make an orchard. They do trees. So you can actually do something that's like long. You don't have to fuck with. You just run through it and pick it up later. There's just so many different ways. And on top of it, it's a social sim. So you have all these people in the town that you have to talk to and be nice to, figure out what they like, give them gifts, and then eventually find one of them to marry. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's just so many different things that you're doing in this game. And now, if you don't like sim-based games, you're not going to like it at all. But for a sim-based game, this is probably one of the most robust games I've seen where it just gets so many fucking options. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm I'm right now concentrating on foraging. So I'm doing a little bit of planting. You just you water them in the morning and you walk away. Um, but other than that, I'll run into the woods. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Look at this. Dandelions and wild horseradish. Fuck yeah. And I put that in my cell box. I get a couple hundred gold out of it. Like, fuck yeah. I didn't do shit. And I sold a bunch of dandelions to some idiot. <laughs> great see that's why you go into the mines you get you some iron and copper and then you make sprinklers and you don't even have to water anymore oh shit dude i gotta do that did you guys do fishing yes. in stardew valley i max. That's, that's really hard i max. <laughs> it my... is really hard no, that's really it, hard it gets easier it gets easier for you but I'm it ma- kind of doesn't though did you go for like those super rare fish what I've, a fucking I've, nightmare i've got max level <laughs> Uh, well, fishing. yeah, but still. So it's, nice. the, this isn't even my main account. This is just my fishing <laughs> this is, account. This is, this is just my, my fishing account. account. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> God, I sounded like a douche when I said that, didn't I? <laughs> this no, is just no, my yeah. woodcutting account. This no, is my woodcutting okay, account. Okay, now you're going RuneScape on me. But yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the game's so, great. Uh, so you guys need your armor trimmed at all? <laughs> God damn it. We don't yeah. need to get mm. into that. We don't need to what? get into that. <laughs> Why not? Every, every time RuneScape's brought up. We, we should Norma? do RuneScape as a community game. Just going to Varrock <laughs> and screaming with bold, flashy, wavy text. I don't I think I've actually ever Rune played RuneScape. I think they oh, finally you are got rid of that. It absolutely nothing. You aren't missing I, a goddamn thing. What are you thing. talking about? That is there honestly, is nothing there. That is one of the best MMOs. It really is. No. Is it though? No. I don't yes. know. I don't no, know. No, like I'm being honest. In general. <laughs> it, it has some really good trade skills that most MMOs just don't have. Like armor trimming. No, like leather, yeah. you have crafting, you have mining, you have the smithing, you have the jewelries, you have herb luring, you have construction. You can make a fucking house. Uh, isn't that like... <laughs> Didn't somebody pay like hundreds of dollars to buy like the little <laughs> gold crown for their RuneScape guy? Like, at le- if you're gonna pay money to buy shit in an MMO, like real life money, at least play an MMO worth playing. It is worth playing. Mic drop. Mic it's drop. Its, it's got its own economy. That's kind of neat. I, I don't. Y- yeah, I don't but know. every I can... MMO has an economy, right? Yeah, this I'm having, a hard this time with economy. MMOs in general, though. Like, I, I like. I don't know. Maybe it's just being like older it's just, i don't yeah. have time for mmos it's just like yeah MMOs are just I feel so, the same way there's so this, this if i have to sit like there and one. farm like a farm like a bunch of low-level grunts in order to get to like level two i'm just gonna freaking shoot myself in the face See, this like, is why i play i play so... guild wars because guild wars isn't grindy i can solo the entire the entire mmo just about um and i don't have to pay a monthly fee for it so if i let it sit there for two years like i did last time i got into a guild wars kick it doesn't <laughs> cost me a damn thing and i can pick it that's back cool. up and play it more runescape doesn't cost cool. you anything in runescape you don't have to play with anyone ever ever yeah i also the r- gameplay, really the gameplay of guild wars is way better than runescape though runescape for, for gameplay combat isn't actually fun <laughs> it's just <laughs> like everything you actually Damn. do everything that you're doing to interact in the game isn't fun is clicking it's more the implication of what you're doing in the progression i i think what usually gets me in like mmo specifically is how it's played not mm-hmm. Like, like it's usually like you hit a key on the keyboard to do an attack. So you're like sitting there and call, do you like, okay, fireball, AOE, heal, buff, damage, buff, attack. You know, and you're just like, and you're just like hitting these keys. There's like no like mechanics to it. And I think that's what really gets Yeah, me. just, just like no that, that rocket, just like that rocket car game where you're just like, uh, jump, flip. I'm gonna hit a a sphere. Thing. <laughs> yeah, that's how. <laughs> so, so, for the thing. record, if you're really oh, wanting yeah. to get down to it, all video games, you're looking at a screen and you're pressing yeah. buttons. Well, that's yeah. all you're doing. I, yeah, but at the same time, it's, like, oh, look, at. it's Cuphead. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump <laughs> and then I'm gonna duck. I'm gonna hold X. To, okay, so, to attack so that guy. check it out. So here, here, the Tom Guild Wars attacking and fighting things versus like a dark souls attacking and fighting things yeah. apples and oranges they all yeah. like obviously obviously there's a lot of tactic into well, how you lay sort out of and sort what you of do. though because guild wars even has the dodging mechanic you can dodge enemy attacks it's not hitbox based but you can still dodge right hmm. but it's like a dice roll you know that no, it, it's a lot, it's not a, a dice it... roll not in guild wars and any other mmo yes i would agree with you but in pvp unless you're rolling around people you're not PvPing correctly. 
It's Guild Wars is weird. Yeah, I don't know. It would, I would like to see like an MMO that has like a Dark Souls mechanic, like hitbox based. But I don't think that's possible. I don't know. Anyway, screw it. Carry on. <laughs> okay. Well, is there anything else, Tom, that you've been doing? No, that was it. That was it. All right. What about you? Okay, I was, I was wondering. I'm like, is no, someone going to throw it to me? There was an awkward no. ass silence because no didn't, one you said didn't play, You didn't play any video games at all. No, not it. at all. But um, Got it. not a game. Not 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 a, oh. not a single game. Not a fuck ton of Stardew. Not some Rocket League before the cast, and not that new ass Middle Earth bullshit game that just came out. Focus on yeah. ass. Yeah. How is that? I want to hear about this. So um, I have Middle Earth Shadow of War, and I came from actually playing Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Played it, loved it, great game. This so far, I'm only about three hours in. Great game so far. It plays combat-wise just like the first. And for mm-hmm. those of you who don't know, think Assassin's Creed mixed with God of War. Yeah, the Is combat I, also seemed a lot like the Batman Arkham games. Yeah, that's what yes. I always associated with. Because those I would put very much as Guild of Wars plus Assassin's Creed. Because it's very much a mm. stealth instant kill. Hmm. Yeah, it's very heavy combat based or combo based. Later in your progressions, you'll get skills where when you hit over 100 100 people, you start doing more damage and stuff like that. So they Mm -hmm. lean heavy on the get into a big epic fight and just combo the fuck out of it. Hmm. And just yeah, don't that's get hit. Super fun though. I looked it looked awesome. It looked like a blast. I always had a lot of fun with the Batman series and like how those played. I had fun with Assassin's Creed and how that played. And so this one always like the uh Shadow like the Shadow of War and that little that franchise always seemed really awesome. Especially because so, I'm like I really like the Tolkien universe. Yes. Um don't go to this for um canon though. This is not right. No, that's fine. It's just Mm -hmm. I want to experience it. (laughs) Does it have like worlds and areas that were like from that universe? Yes. Like there will be there will be places from the books and stuff. But like I said, this is not canon. Um, A lot of people are pissed off because they're like Bible thumper Tolkien kind of people, and this is definitely not Mm -hmm. canon. But Nemesis system. Um, Mm -hmm. this thing is awesome. I haven't seen the new shit about it or a lot of the new stuff about it, but I'd seen one thing. So the Nemesis system, for those who don't know, it's a hierarchy of orcs. You have like your very, very top badass commander and he has people under him. They have people under them and it's a living, breathing rank. People, they will challenge each other and fight each other to get higher in ranks. You can take over one of them and assist him in getting higher in the ranks. So you're mind controlling him. You kill everyone above him. Hmm. And then as you kill them, he progresses and eventually you control him. So when you say, Hey, come help me fight this. He brings all his fuckers with him. So you're Hmm. essentially raising an army, which is really awesome. One of the new things that they brought in though, was this idea of them hunting you as much as you're hunting them. On the stream oh, earlier that's today, interesting. there was that's an occasion cool. of this where I'm running and all of a sudden out of nowhere comes this commander orc and he like literally pops out of the fucking bush <laughs> and the goddamn that's dude hilarious. kills me. And then whenever they kill you, kill, being killed is part of the game. It's not a load re- or reload thing. It's you die, you come back in and now you get a vendetta ma- mis- mission against the guy who just killed you. Huh? So it's really, really big when it comes to that. Like it's just huge scale. That's so cool. Nice. It's um, I've never like, been interested in Lord of the Rings very much personally, or the world in it so much. But the I did watch you play this a little bit earlier, and the combat seems really good. Um, it's got, I mean, the first game got really good reviews, and it's cheap all the time. Um, but it looks it looks fun. It looks really good. It looks well made. It really is. This is going to be the year it came out is going to destroy it Mm because it won't be game of the year. There's no way there is two better open world games above it, potentially three. And that said, Mm -hmm. this game's fantastic, but you have Zelda, you have horizon zero dawn and you potentially have near. 
Mm. Well, let's be real. Mario hasn't even come out yet. Mario's not getting game of the year. There's no way. I, I, this, game of the year. this game could be <laughs> my game of the year. That's the only that's the only award that matters. This that, <laughs> Mario Mario it. could be fucking year. great. <laughs> Mario's not going to make game of the year. Um, it won't even make game of the year. Yeah, it, yeah, it won't even be Nintendo's <laughs> best game of the year. Arms, probably not, hands down, probably not. is going to be the best game <laughs> oh, that Nintendo has no, made this fuck year. You. No, it's obviously Fuck Bomber you. Man. Shut uh, it down. Damn it's it, I forgot, be, about, uh, I forgot about Bomberman. The best tasting Nintendo Switch cartridge goes to <laughs> Bomberman R. God, that was terrible. But I no, forgot this, about the, the tasting. Right? <laughs> this game is fantastic, and for those of you who aren't familiar, another cool thing about the Orcs is the, all the commanders have strengths and weaknesses. You can mind control the underlings to figure out the weakness of the people above him. So one guy might be deadly afraid of wolves. So he'll be in an area where they have them all caged. You unlock this wolf and he just runs terror everywhere. But this guy gets in pure terror and he starts fleeing. And when they're running, you just track him down and just start slicing the fuck out of him because they're just trying to get out of there. So you can pin him to the ground by shooting him in the foot with an arrow and then just come up and just smack a guy to death. It's awesome. <laughs> so, um, so far, so good. I'll have more on it next week for sure. But it's, as of right now, it's really fucking good so far. I'm hyped, I'm hyped to watch nice. more of it because I've been like really interested in that series for a while. So Yeah, odds are tomorrow you can probably catch me streaming it in the morning as long as I'm yeah. not doing rank grind on Rocket League. I will, I will totally watch that while playing The Witcher right. or Overwatch. I will watch that while grinding ranked on Rocket League. Nice. Sounds like so a um, we've got, we've actually got a shit ton of news this week. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip a bunch by hitting headlines. Uh, Steam VR tracking will soon support four base stations in 2018, giving you 10 by 10 feet of play area. So that's cool. Yay! That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, Super Metroid will not be at Games Done Quick for the first time ever. That is really surprising, and I wonder why. Um, no! Doesn't matter. Fortnite's free-to-play Battle Royale mode passes 10 million players. Uh, Battlegrounds. Like, yay! yay! Battlegrounds becomes the first Steam game to hit 2 million concurrent users. Yay! Like that. <laughs> uh, Overwatch is having a Halloween event. Yes, we knew about that. Yay! <laughs> uh, and Cuphead crosses 1 million copies sold. Which Yay. is also kind of cool. Uh, in, quick, cool. Like in quick news, Valve unveils a new version of Counter Strike's Dust 2 map, also known as the best map in any video game ever created. Um, it is a <laughs> oh. visual update. It doesn't play very differently, uh, and it is a much needed graphical polish to Dust 2 in CSGO. I like Neat. it. Pro players like it. It's good news. Okay, Yay. now, now for the real Yay. news. Um, okay. Humble Bundle uh, has been acquired by IGN. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a thing. So we should, we should probably talk about that. We can be sure that all games in future Humble Bundles will absolutely be 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Game of the year. <laughs> 10 out of 10 games. <laughs> no. All of them. Game of the year. Every so, game, 10 out of 10 game of the year. So Humble Bundle <laughs> is still going to be operating in its mm -hmm. own siloed fashion. Yeah, Per this article, IGN said that if it's not broken, don't fix it. They're not going to interfere interfere with the way they do things. They're just going to say, "Hey, you know, here's the resources you need to do what you do best." And we'll probably isn't take that a isn't that fucking boilerplate for every acquisition though? Yeah. No, hey, we bought this thing you love. We promise it's not going to change. Uh, by <laughs> yeah, the way, every single game is ten out of ten IGN approved. Oh. Yeah. Well, but, well, my IGN... question though is like, what um. What, how what were they operating under as far as you know humble bundle specifically like how, are they make are they turning a profit like how profitable I mean, they, is a company like humble bundle because they i mean they take these games they they must get them pretty cheap and the whole point of humble bundle was to donate to like you know causes so right you you can when you buy a humble bundle you get sliders uh, and you can say, okay, this much goes to developers, this much goes to a charity of my choosing, uh, and this much goes to Humble as the Humble tip. And I always make sure to throw in, you know, when I buy 10 bucks in a bundle, I make sure to throw them a buck or two saying, hey, Humble, I love what you're doing. Here's a tip for you. Please don't go out of business. I love what you do. Uh, on the yeah. side, they also run the Humble store. So you can get games, get Steam keys out of them. So I don't know if they were profitable, but they certainly have a viable business model. 
And also right. don't confuse sites that are not profitable still bring in a lot of money because they have yeah. to pay the heads. Right. I understand. I understand that for sure. I'm just really curious about that. I've never actually looked into it. So for them to be acquired by IGN, which is probably more of an advertising outlet than anything really. News I wonder outlet. if that, I wonder if that was like a strategic thing more so like, like humble bundles raking it in and IGN needs it or, are they operating on a loss? And then IGN, since they're an advertising outlet, is a more it's a reasonable thing because they want Humble Bundle to stick around. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna. Know, it could be anything, really. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm gonna say that you know, initially, nothing is gonna change with Humble Bundle. You know, a because they don't want to do that because it would make everything look shitty, uh, mm-hmm. and b because big companies don't move really fast. Um, yeah. But I, I'm not worried about Humble Bundle in the next six months. I am worried about Humble Bundle over the next two years because. I could really see IGN fucking with this formula. I could really, I really see them. They don't because Humble Bundle has such a good thing going on right now. I yeah. love Humble Bundle. I love what they do and what they stand for. And I hope this doesn't change it too much. Let's be yeah. honest. I, I they, agree. they probably and won't do I, a lot. because This is probably going to equate to a tax break for them. That's because, exactly what I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah, I was going to I could see that. that. I could that's see that. more what I was thinking at the same time. This is no, I, I will say this. If anyone from Humble or if you know anyone that works at Humble Bundle, um, you need to tell them this. I need Humble Tip renamed to IGN Pocketbook. <laughs> so when I add to the Humble Tip, which by the way, I don't feel the need to do anymore because you are acquired by 10 out of 10 site of the year. Nothing better. <laughs> by the way, the site shit still 10 out of 10. Um, I, I'm not going to give you a humble tip anymore. I will still give money to Humble Bundle and give it to developers and charities, but mm-hmm. you don't need a humble tip. Here's a humble tip. Don't sell out to IGN. Ah, fuck, you ruined it. <laughs> uh, well, what a bomb I show. Mean, don't, that don't doesn't say. necessarily mean something bad. Somebody, you know, it's not IGN's not a bad whatever. company. They have some good information on their site. And if someone sells their company, by all means, get your fucking cash, man. If humble, ten out of ten retort. If, if humble needs, <laughs> <laughs> if humble needs more money to keep going the way doing what they're doing, if you know if that's not sustainable for them, and this deal with IGN does make that sustainable, right? Then you can't really argue with them going with that. I mean, that's that's almost what I that's think a good is point. going on. I they think are they're also I, a business. Ten yeah, out of ten, I, good point. <laughs> I think they're operating on a loss. And I think IGN coming in and let, letting them operate on a loss and then getting that tax write-off because of the uh, the whole um, charity thing, I think that's what the deal was for. Mm-hmm. I think they're, they are going to probably leave it as it that is. That would make sense. And it probably just works really good for their bottom line for both yeah. both people. Yeah, it'll but, it'll be interesting. Same. So I, am, I we'll, am worried that it will change for the worse, but same. hopefully not. We'll see. We'll have to see where it goes. Uh, next up, the ESRB does not consider loot boxes to be gambling. Basically, what they've said is, hey, we looked at loot boxes, and while you are buying something with some element of chance to it, you are getting game content out of it. It's not like you're buying a loot box where you could get nothing. You are always going to get something out of a loot box, even if it's not the thing you want. So, technically, not gambling. Well, there's a As as swarmy as loot boxes can be, I can't really disagree with that. Well, there's also one other big thing. It's not real money. That is another big part of it not being gambling is there is no direct cash out. Granted, some of these have methods to get real cash out of the items. Most of these games do not directly relate their items to real cash. So question question for you. Have you guys seen that thing that I don't know if it's Japan that does it somewhere does it where the gambling is illegal. So like you play these slot machines and you get these little balls and then you go around the corner and you sell the balls to this guy and this guy gives you money and technically yes. that's not gambling <laughs> yes <laughs> you know that, it's kind of the same a, that is a well, patchy part or is it patchy any, i don't know that, where you're getting items of random chance where any of those items have inherent value i mean that's the same true thing but that's it's not like, like video poker. it's not like a crate that you Oh, get, pachinko. And you put in right, one yeah. one currency and get uh, another direct 
currency out of it. That's it's, true. I mean, it, you, that's item. I mean that's the thing. It's right? not much different than going to the store and buying a pack of Magic the Gathering cards or Pokemon cards or you know. I suppose yep. you're right. And this and is this is they... exactly that example is exactly what they called out in their brief. Mm-hmm. Oh, then they. Uh, it seems kind of strange. Like it's. I guess it's maybe more the community that establishes these like prices per item thing. You know, um, I, I, that might be really what what makes us feel like it's gambling. Like, especially like even just like in Rocket League, you see like some of these items that you can get from a random crate are up to two hundred uh, two hundred fifteen dollars. No, 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 two hundred and fifteen keys. Yeah, two hundred fifteen oh, keys. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, sorry, no. I, no, I, I say that because no, that you're is right. a you're big right. difference, yeah, and that's what I hoped to to say exactly, which is Did crazy, you... absolutely crazy. But that's like a community established price. Like if the community yep. decided that was worthless tomorrow, mm-hmm. then that would plummet and no one would pay that. As yeah. well as there's no way to get that out into direct cash unless you go through some third parties that are shady and you risk losing the item altogether. Mm-hmm. It's true. Absolutely. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this entire story is other rating boards have not decided yet. Um, the biggest one being Peggy. They have not decided whether loot boxes are gambling or not. And if they are, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see the fallout from that. Now, um, game developers have changed the way uh, loot boxes have worked. So in Dota 2, they actually made changes because Dota is so popular in China, they can't lose the Chinese market. So when you buy a, a treasure, um, that has a range of costumes, you are guaranteed to get a costume that you haven't already unlocked with that treasure uh, until you have all of them, then you'll start getting repeats. Um, but they had to change the way that worked because of the law in China. It's really interesting, but at the same time, hmm. if you really want that invoker skin, you can buy 10 of these treasures and you're guaranteed to get that eventually. Well, I like Jap- that. Japan, yeah, it's it's really nice for the for the gamers. Japan mm. has issued this. I don't know if they've claimed it as gambling, but they force anything of random like this to show the odds. Because there was a big yes, thing they where they right, said, right. "Hey, there's a five times drop rate." Some dude dropped a couple thousand dollars. He didn't get it, and then I guess it got investigated, and it turned out that there was no rate increase. They just said it. So now in Japan, uh, any game crazy. with any kind of loot crate has to say the percent chance of getting every item in that crate. Don't they do that uh, in Europe now too? Like in the UK and and I think I don't know if the Brit if in Britain is the same way, but I I heard that it was also I in Europe. I do not know. I cannot I heard speak that to that, that directly. Too. I can say that I know some of these games that come from Japan don't remove it for other areas, so you get it by proxy. Hmm. Which is kind of nice. Yeah, I I wish that all games did the Dota style of you will get everything in here with no repeats. But let's be real. Imagine Overwatch trying to do that, right? By like level 30, maybe level 40, you have run out of items. You are not getting anything else new in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, So it it does require a game company to put out tons and tons and tons of additional content. That could be shit. There's a lot of shit content uh, for Dota 2 cosmetics, right? Everything I've seen in Overwatch, I don't I think I've ever seen anything of poor quality, but I've seen a shit ton of poor quality Dota 2 items. Well, but they don't also... have to constantly come out with items. If the game is good, people will still play it. You don't have to have some kind of cosmetic, right. or cosmetic item incentive to, and unlocks to keep playing some game. Now, 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 here's the thing. They don't care if you're playing the game or not. Rocket League doesn't yeah. care if you're still playing it. Rocket League cares if you're right. still buying keys. You can well, play Fashion League there. all day long. <laughs> I do. Rocket I do. League. And so does Adam. <laughs> well, no, Rocket I'm just saying. League introduces free items all the time, though. Yes, I, they do. But the idea is a game after X number of years, they're not making new game sales. They need to yeah, monetize things inside the right. game. And with mm-hmm. game prices not going up over the last two decades, really, it's fucking insane. Development cost, <laughs> development cost has went up. Right. And there hasn't been a correlation. So, of course, these kind of things are just going to stay in game to make them money while they keep going. Yeah, they need them. They really do need them. As far as like just <laughs> them actually breaking even, they absolutely need things well, like this. It's why I've turned the round. I used to be the guy who never bought anything. But if I'm in a free game, I don't mind throwing $20 into a free game that I'm enjoying. 
I, if I, I'm I in a free game, I don't mind. You you know I throw a bunch of money at Dota 2 every year when TI rolls around. Um, because I got the game for free, so I don't mind supporting them. But mm -hmm. I paid for Overwatch. I don't feel the need to buy loot crates, and the fact that the store is there is a little bit insulting. Um, it's not like they throw it in your face and say you have to pay for it. They give you a shit ton of stuff for free. Mm -hmm. But I don't ever feel the need to... Like, Battlegrounds is a great example. I bought Battlegrounds. It's still technically not a released game. It's still technically early access. I'm mm -hmm. never giving them a dime for loot boxes. I just won't do it. Well, that's because their loot boxes suck. Well, yeah. there's that too. But that's really an aside because Overwatch's loot boxes are great. But I'm never going to buy one. To me, it's just I'm not afraid to spend money in a game after I buy it anymore because I it, feel that the games are not priced adequately to what they really should be. If a, if a game isn't priced very high and I like the developer, I think what they're doing is pretty good. I like the game. I don't really have a problem spending a little right. bit on cosmetic so, stuff if that's something I want. Really, what it comes down to is I will only buy loot boxes in IGN approved 10 out of 10 humble bundle games. <laughs> God go. damn it. There anyway, with that, I think that's about all we got for you guys this week. Um, yes. <laughs> for those of you guys watching us on stream, uh, you can catch us on YouTube with our ever expanding content, which I have like three videos I still need to put up there um, <laughs> at 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. Um, if you'd like to tell us about some content you'd like to see us talk about, not talk about, just some general questions of, hey, Tom, why do you bitch about IGN so much? You can tweet at because. us at 72 PC Podcast. Um, if you're one of those barbarians who like RSS feeds, you can go to 72pinconnector.com to get your RSS feeds. If you're anyone else, you can go to iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, any of those podcasting apps. Um, if you are on YouTube right now watching us, thank you because not many people watch this on YouTube. They watch our other stuff. You are like the third person. But yes. <laughs> come hang out with us. us. Checking the video, make sure it turned out okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but do come hang out with us on Saturday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Chill and chat with us. Uh, we try to make it fun, interactive. If we don't say it verbally, we do often interact in chat. So drop by. It's a good time. Other than that, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. So until next week, game on. Game on. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Stick around for Jackbox. Do that. Woo. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do, do 10 it. 10 out of 10. Do 10 it. out of 10. <laughs> <laughs>